and welcome to the podcast where good trivia gets rewarded and bad lies are punished. This is What's the Fact. Yes, welcome to the show. My name's Ryan Whistle. This is Warren Robertson. And today, Yaman, yeah, it's an <laughs> island style, man. Yes, welcome to the show, Yaman. Yeah, Do you like I was, I honestly, like, I saw you <laughs> arrive like that, and then I thought, oh, no, it's already, it's incredibly cringy. And then, and then you did the intro. Yeah. And yeah. people tuned off. They just turned. They just turned off the, the podcast. They were just like, "I'm not. I'm not here for that." Well, you know what the show's about. It's about <clears throat> Bermuda, Bahamas. Come, Come on, on, pretty, pretty mama. mama. Yeah. Kilago, Montego. These are probably places in islands. Jamaica, uh, Kokomo. Right. Mm. With, with, so the whole podcast is about islands, but people know that yes. if they've clicked on the Because they've seen the thing, yes, Yeah, and yes. surprisingly, surprisingly, this has actually been a relatively easy one to... It has been. It's, it's to rich. To kind of come up with facts. It yeah. goes in many weird directions, wonderful directions. Mm. There's history. Mm. There is the uh, natural world of it all. There's murder, suspense, intrigue, and I just mean like actually between us. <laughs> 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 Lots of... It's been a setting for many, many wonderful uh, bits of art. Yeah, play here and there. But good, a movie, I'm, like I'm, I'm going to start this, and I'm going to start this now Do on a basic, because because it's a question, right? Like what? Australia is the biggest island in the world. That's my fact. I suppose that's my fact. Oh, is that your fact? That's my fact. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you see, man. You see, Ryan likes Ryan likes to get kind of as soon as I say something that's like obvious, then Ryan gets all like up himself and he starts doubting it. And this is like, you can make Ryan do anything like that. <laughs> you can make Ryan, yeah, anything. Gaslighting me, anything you, you me <laughs> doubt my existence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anything you want. Well, see now, exactly, that's exactly what's happening, folks. Yeah. It's like, he's like a hypnotist. He's like, oh. I'm going to hypnotize you, and now you're hypnotized. No, I'm not. No, you must doubt you it. You are. You must now, doubt it. Or are you? I don't know. Um, do, but um, so he said it, and then I went, yes, it is. Because I know it's, it's a continent, but it's also... Sort of a standalone continent. I, I like this is one of those facts on the flipping chappies. You just got to ask yourself what's the definition of an island, right? Like, what is an island? That's why I'm no starting. No man is that's an island. That, no, no. That's why I'm starting with this one. I'm kind of like, what's the uh, <laughs> what's the definition of an island? That's what very, is it? Yeah, it's a good way to yeah, start. What is it? Um, well, okay. I'm gonna say uh, fine. I'm, I'm gonna say it is because it's. Uh, it's a standalone piece of land. Doesn't matter how big it is or small it is, it's not connected to another piece of land, and it's uh, maybe formed independently of the other pieces of land. And it's surrounded by water, right? Sure. I mean, that's, that's kind of the oh, critical the Earth, sort of because Earth is seventy percent water. Yeah, so but that's, that's sort of the critical thing about an island is it's got to be like a piece of land surrounded by water. Well, right? if it's your fact for real, I'm saying for real, uh, yeah, you're speaking the truth. Okay, I'm I'm actually lying. Are you? Fuck yeah, it. yeah, yeah. No, it <laughs> it's a great place. Mind game. <laughs> no, it's a good start because you know intrinsically, like uh, Australia is, as you said earlier, a continent. Yes, it is. And a continent is not an island, just by definition, because as soon as something gets classified as a continent, it no longer ah. becomes an island. Otherwise, North and South America would be an island, which would be this giant uh, island, right? They're all kind of connected by Central America. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it, but, but it's all mm. surrounded by water. Ultimately, Africa, since they dug the Suez Canal, would be an island. <laughs> right? I mean, technically. But, but, so obviously, there's a difference between continents and islands. So, what's the difference between Australia, say, and, and Greenland, which is actually the world's biggest island? Mm. So, Greenland is the world's biggest island. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. So, now we have to look at it. We have to say, like, okay, what defines the one as a continent? But it can't be a game of, ah, oh, I got there first. I called it a continent first. Therefore, you can't call it an island. It can't be that. Ironically, ironically, it's not. It's not quite that. But it is. It is very open for debate. There are. There, uh -huh. There's a lot of. There's a lot of debate around it. Like, um, let's just compare the two, right? So Australia, twenty-two million inhabitants. Yes. Fifty-fifth uh, biggest, um, you know, populous, most populous country in the world. Uh, it's seven point seven five million square kilometers. Mm -hmm. Sixth largest country in the world. Right. right? Greenland. Has only fifty-seven thousand inhabitants, so really? many, many fewer. Yeah, two point one six million square kilometers, though. So it's pretty big. Or well, yes. the twelfth, twelfth largest country in the world. <clears throat> so, but so, so how do you how do you look at these two things and then determine? Well, this one is a continent, and this one, this one is, is big enough. So, so what? Th there's some criteria that sort of scientists and geographers look at, but they don't they don't necessarily agree with. Like in the West, we teach that there's seven continents and there's some debate, but some other places teach that there's fewer. 
Um, so what, what they're kind of narrowing it down to is the following four topics. Tectonic independence, which means it's got its own tectonic plate. Okay. Uh, a unique flora and fauna. Uh-huh. Uh, cultural uniqueness. And then the local belief that they live on a continent. So the actual the people who live there think that they live on a continent as opposed to an <coughs> island. <coughs> that is odd. And on this basis, Australia does, in fact, meet many of the conditions because Australia is on the Australian tectonic plate. Okay. Is isolated, right? It's got, obviously, unique flora and fauna. Yes, yes, right? yes, yes Like yes, stuff yes. that doesn't exist anywhere else. Thank it's also God. It's also unique in terms of its local population. And firstly, the the native Australians are different to, to anywhere else. Yeah. And, in fact, now... What with colonization, it's a very Western culture in the South Pacific, which is very unusual, gives it its own unique kind of cultural perspective. And then they do believe they're a continent. The people there live on Australia believing that they, they live on a continent. Whereas in Greenland, on the other hand, um, it shares a tectonic plate with Canada and and America. Okay. Um, it does have some unique plants, but the animals are like reindeers and polar bears and stuff that exist in other places. Um, they do have their own culture, but it is considered an offshoot of the North American Arctic cultures. Oh. So, so it's not completely distinct. And they don't believe they're a continent. They, they believe they're islanders and that they live on an island. So on this kind of basis, you, you look at it and you go like, okay, that's, that's the definition of, of a continent. But then Europe doesn't obey many of these particular conditions either. It doesn't have unique flora and fauna. It's part of the same Eurasian tectonic plate as as Asia. Mm-hmm. You know, it's really only the cultural belief that they are their own independent continent and they've got different cultures and things that live on it that that sort of defines it as a continent. It's mm. kind of a weird as I said, it's, it's really it's really sort of open for for debate, but what most geographers have settled on is Australia is a continent and the biggest island in the world is Greenland. Gee whiz. So now we know. Well, there we have it. Our, our, our episode has no <laughs> definition. Yeah. yeah for, for all we know, we could talk about basically anything. I'm, uh, my first fact is the island of Brazil. And, uh, what? Ju- <laughs> what? <laughs> now, just one cotton-picking minute. <laughs> uh, I've gone um, for my opener uh, quite proudly South African, quite uh, mm. weirdly South African. And there's a bit of a connection here uh, to me personally. Oh no. Um, Mona, I'm so sorry, darling. Oh no, look what's happened. This is an omen. Yeah, we have to look oh, after man. her. We have to look after her, Ryan. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, Baron. Did you pay the installment this month? No, the installment is eighty billion dollars. I said oh, I'd get on. it I'd get it next month if you if you got it this month. No, I um I had to get groceries instead. Oh. Yeah, let's put a toolbox there. Thank you. Deets, thank you very much. <laughs> it's nice that we have a toolbox because I've never built anything in my life. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's naughty. So <clears throat> we are <clears throat> proudly uh, South African um, for my opener. Uh, you know, to compete with your terrible Australian opener. <laughs> I mean, I didn't even do an Australian accent. I should. I should have really done an Australian yeah. accent. I don't know why anybody goes to Australia. Let's be proudly South African. This Australia. I don't know why anyone goes there. They've got, got family that that moved. In. They've got. They've got. A lot of racists. That's what you know, like a lot. South Africa's well, racists all moved, moved there, yeah. Joking. And then <laughs> and then they have they have two cultural attractions. The one is a giant building that looks like a napkin at a fancy restaurant. And the other one is a bloody big rock in the middle of a desert. Yes. I can't think of any other reason why Charles you Charles and Diana went there. And then she was <laughs> to, to Uluru. To the, is it, it Uluru? Airs, Uluru. Airs, Uluru. No, no, I mean What's it used called? to be called it used to Uluru. Oh, is it got a, a an yeah, it used to be called name. it used to be called Airs Rock, but they've changed it. For much the same reason we changed Port Elizabeth to Iberta. I see. <laughs> right. There was once a, a very funny meme. Uh, the dudes like said, uh, hey, sure, um, the Sydney Opera House looks so beautiful this time of year. And it was a photo. And it was actually uh, the Good Hope Center in Cape Town. Because it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looks similar in its shape. Oh, it was so funny. Um, yeah, so you're, you're Australian opener. And I don't mean Alan Border. Hey. Hey, yeah, no, no, I, I saw what you did there, but didn't you bat down, down the order a you bit? You did, hey, shucks, man. Yeah. Matthew Hayden, here we go. Ma- Matthew Hayden. Yeah, look at me. Um, my South African opener Marsh. is is a beautiful thing. It is um, it is uh, the Marion Islands, or Marion Island, because right. it's Prince Edward Island as well. We Our military 
annexed it in 1947. Nice. We had to fight off three fur seals and a penguin, <laughs> and the skirmish lasted about half a day, but we managed to Let, let's be arrest honest. that penguin. The fact that we won that is a big <laughs> step forward for us because we recently went in to help Lesotho with some riots and, and got our butts kicked by the rioters. So, so the fact is that that was a glory. That was a glory era for us. Unlike Australia, hey, who got their butts kicked by an emu. By, oh, like by no. Yeah, I remember. Oh, shucks, yeah. I remember anyway, that. That anyway so yeah, we, yeah, so, we, we beat the right, first so, so my connection there is uh, when I was at Urban Brew, um, at some point they did a documentary and people from Urban Brew went with the researchers on a ship. I think it goes from, is it PE or Cape Town? I think it's Cape Town. Uh, but it goes there and then you, you have to kind of stay on the island for six months. So the six only, months? The only activity on the island is... It's quite a proudly South African environment story because it is the world's largest um, protected nature reserve, if you like, because it goes out into the ocean. Um, and everyone's agreed and, you know, international community agreed. But if you look at the, the, the space that it occupies, it's, it's one of the world's largest sort of protected marine things. The whole island, you can't live there. Uh, it's only for research purposes. So there's quite a few researchers on the island at any given time. So we had people who actually went and filmed there and we spoke to them. And um, and they stayed there for six months. Six months. So it's, it's a weird experience what happens to you psychologically is uh, it's very solitary. Uh, it's the, the, the place is where there's mad. It's always... Windy, but man, it's like Gordon's Bay, but just worse, you know. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> there's no, there's no bowls club <laughs> no, on no, Marion Island. No, there isn't. That sells you like not a twenty rand to. pint. Yeah. Not allowed to. You're not allowed. Not allowed no. a bowls club. I don't think no so. No twenty rand castle lager. And uh, it's 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 like nippy all the time. It's chilly, and and the only it's only scientists walking around measuring things, taking things, taking things. But it's a, it's a beautiful thing, and they're doing some seriously amazing work there. Uh, weather work systems, meteorology things. They're measuring the original hydrogen line when the beginning of the Earth began. I don't know how they're doing it, but good, good, to, good luck to what them. What do they do with all the all data? The, no, no, all the sperm. All the poo. Because those guys must be going oh, there. And they must be six months. Yeah, I think. They must be I rubbing one out quite a lot. I think they send send a little bit of everyone, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you have to take you have to take your your dirty <coughs> guys. Just a, well, hey, <laughs> hey, welcome to Marion Island. Here's your rubbish bag and your 14 boxes of tissues. You whatever whatever you take out, you take out. If you know what I mean, whatever you put you put in this bag and you take it with you when you go back to Cape Town. <laughs> <laughs> so um, a mate that I work with, Rory, he's cool. Hey, he's in. He works with Michelle, who's uh, busy watching right now. Uh, but L Rory's sister did the six month stint. Okay. And uh, I chatted to her the one night as Do well. You guys know Rory? You know Rory. Rory, Rory's sister. He works with Michelle. And uh, and it was like, despite the solitude, and and the the weird isolation of it all, um, and it's really hard. It's it's. I know. I was just talking some, about that. Yeah, <laughs> but you go almost through like a weird kind of, almost a depression. Like oh my god. Where am I? What am I doing? What's life? Because there's about? no Wi-Fi. Yeah, and then. Or is it? There must be Wi-Fi. Nah, uh, I'm not sure. But then you go back to normal life, and something calls you back. They all want to return. Have another go at Marion. <laughs> <laughs> it's because uh, they, they, there's no I mean. there's no constant pressure from life, right? Yeah. There's no like everyday no. capitalism there. No, it's it's wonderful. And then like she said, there is a siren that goes off, and then like they'll make an announcement, and then it's like. Orcas in the bay, orcas in the bay. And then everyone just runs to the bay and they see orcas in the bay. So it's that kind of... <laughs> <laughs> but what are the other alarms for? <laughs> <laughs> Yanni's having a wank. <laughs> Yanni's having And they all run and they, they watch Yanni have a wank. And so it sounds uh, lovely. It's a, it's a big place in the world to, to look at the sea life, the, 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 the birds, the seals. The, I'll get to my fact now. They did once have a problem with... Uh, this it sadly used to be a an island for um, sealers and whalers, and they brought mice with them, and, and oh. they fucked up the island. Mice, so they thought, oh no, no problem, let's bring some cats. Then they're like seventy thousand cats, no more mice. I just and the pectorals were getting fucking fucked. Excuse my language. Um, is it called a pectoral? 
those birds. Oh, the birds. oh, there's lots of birds. I'm sure some of them are called petrels. So, yeah, petrels. So, so then they had to kind of slowly eliminate through kind of um, give them a bit <laughs> of a disease. <laughs> I was gonna. Yeah, there was. A, it's a weird. It's controversial. But but the, so they're gonna sort out that sort of thing. But that's Marion Island. But um, have they sorted? They've sorted it out now. Yeah. Okay. But other islands have similar type problems. But they're learning from Marion. It's, it's a good place for research and clever South African scientisty types. Um, but here's my fact. Also, also just a valley of of cat carcasses. <laughs> you go there, it's just like a like a fucking r- ravine, just and a, packed full of dead cats. And a weird strain of killer whale that that likes cats. <laughs> 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 Not funny. Um, <clears throat> so here's my my fact though about Marion Island is um, uh, in in 1979 uh, a U.S. Uh, satellite spotted um, quite a unique bit of activity, and it was <laughs> Oaks come check you. He's having a wank. <laughs> <laughs> what it was was what it was was <clears throat> a warm air from low pressure system coming from one direction. A flow of cool and dry air generated by a high pressure. Uh, I'll go from the second. What okay. it was called the Vela satellite, and this is what it picked up in 1979 over the Marian Island. Uh, warm air from a low pressure system coming from one direction, a flow of cool and dry air generated by a high pressure from another direction, and a type of uh, call it a hurricane. What it picked up was the perfect storm, the first perfect storm that had ever been picked up before the the one in the movie. Um, and this is my fact. So the one in the movie was, uh, the movie was 1997, but that perfect storm thing off the coast of uh, Marion Massachusetts. Island. No, Massachusetts was 1991. Oh, okay. This was the first recorded perfect storm off the coast of Mar- Marion Island with uh, the Vela satellite, American satellite. That's what Vela picked up. That's my fact. <laughs> You see now, now I think you've given yourself away a little bit because I think I think there's a lot of truth in this story, but there's some lying. There's this Ryanism happening, and I think the I think the lying is happening around the name of that particular satellite. That's not what the Vela satellite picked up. It's something else. The Vela satellite picked something else up, and then why is Ryanism becoming synonymous with lying? <laughs> Not my no, life's this is, this purpose. Is, no, this is a very good question. You need to ask yourself now, Ryan. <laughs> why is Ryanism lying? Why, why, Ryan? <laughs> constant, constant compulsive lying. One, one reaps what one sows, I suppose. <laughs> hmm. So you're surmising, are you? Yes, I'm saying you're a liar. Oh, you're saying I'm a liar because because, because maybe of it's not like little facts. Yeah, so there's something in there that you're lying about. Sure. I'm lying about a lot. <laughs> 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 so the satellite's called Vela, but it never picked up those three things which uh, incorporate right. the perfect storm. Right. What it picked up was far more sinister. It picked up a flash of light under the ocean. Uh-huh. It was a UFO. No, it wasn't. What they think it was was good old South Africa doing the old nuclear like test. Nuclear thing, right. Uh, and they think it was in... Uh, in in partnership with old Israel, yeah, so, I mean it's it's not a very it's not a very good marine sanctuary if you're letting off nuclear bombs. <laughs> <laughs> like as far as I'm aware, it's not nice. Yeah, it isn't. It killer whales nice. go, Ooh, which means <laughs> fucking shut up. <laughs> no wonder the the mice became a problem there. It killed everything else. <laughs> Cockroaches did so well after 79 on Marion Island. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, mm. I, I can tell you there was, you I, know, I mean, I this is all um, allegorical. Mm. But, but you know, there's a lot of people say things like, oh, well, you know, during apartheid when South African sanctions happened, um, it was amazing how good Israeli wine was during that period. Because Israeli wine, South African wine was getting flown into Israel and then <laughs> slapped and labeled as Israeli wine. <laughs> Labels and then, <laughs> and, then, and then sold out like that. So, <laughs> so there's 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 a lot of those sorts of stories. So if, if there's a rumor that the South African government and Israel were were building a nuclear bomb together, I can yeah, I can believe it. Can and believe and it. and I suppose it's like, hey hey, what are you doing testing that stuff? What what? It's our territory, eh? <laughs> Come <laughs> on. Look, I mean, it's it's a lot. It, you know. That that speaks to the generosity of the apartheid government. Everybody says the apartheid government was one of the worst in the world. But if they were so bad, wouldn't they just have dropped it on us? <laughs> 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 they kill all of us. <laughs> 
So, yes, you get that point. Well done, I was lying. Uh, there was no such perfect storm in Marion Island. Uh, but that is the actual three yeah. criteria for a perfect storm. I try to throw you off big I time. I mean, it, you know, you threw in some facts about a perfect storm. Mm. You threw in some some facts <laughs> about about a nuclear bomb, which is very exciting. South Africa is still the only country to <coughs> voluntarily give up its nuclear arms. Ah, oh. Yeah, That's only country in the world. Yeah, we gave them all up. We Proudly them all South over. African, yeah. hey? Pell and Darba, they're by Harties. Yeah, hey? right? Yes. Right? Yeah, anyway. Um, I've, I've, all right, you've gone kind of proudly South African and, and sort of local with us. Well, I've, I've got a little fact for you. Mm. I've got a little fact that's, that's even more personal, Ryan. It's Ooh. even more personal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say there's, there's a place called Ryan Island, <laughs> and not only is there a place called Ryan Island, it actually holds a very unique record. Oh, man, this rings a bloody bell. <laughs> Of course it does. You've heard the name Ryan somewhere. Where could it be that you've heard the name Ryan? Ryan Island. You said it's a personal story, personal because me, or maybe have you been no, there? No, no, no. I'm just saying because it's because it's called Ryan Island. Oh, nice. Obviously, it's it's not, it's named after you. That's not part of my. Family. So there's an island called Ryan Island, and it holds a, a record. It, hold, it, it actually holds a very particular record. That's that's my fact. Wow. It's not only is there Ryan Island. It's a very special island, Ryan. Just like there is a Ryan, and he's very special. See. You wouldn't lie about that. <laughs> I wouldn't lie about that. <laughs> no, I do, I do think you're special. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to say uh, that, that it's true. I just, I've heard Ryan Island somewhere in my head. going to kick myself of where it might be. Where? Where in the world? Where in the world is Ryan Island? Where in the world? Ryan Island's in the middle of Frank Ocean. Okay. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm going to say it's somewhere in Newfoundland, uh, Canada. Uh, hit me. I'm saying it's true. Your yeah, fact what, is true. What could it possibly be? That it, what's, this, what's its record then if it's in Newfoundland? Have a guess. Okay. I uh, guess maybe it's like um, it's, a, it's a record like uh, the, hmm, something very sweet like People orientated family, like the most. No, no. So my most fact is that the, the island itself, the island itself, is is oh. a special place. All right. It's not not good in any of the people. It's the, right. the fact of the island. That's my fact. I think. Yeah, no, I don't want you to get confused that it's they they held the what the biggest jump rope competition in the world or something there. That's not that's not what this <laughs> is about. Is this particular <laughs> island holds yeah this tug of war game ever. That's right. This particular island is actually special. Ah. Uh. I think it's 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 an island that has uh, the most uh, amount of um, monuments, man-made monuments for any island. So the island itself is special. The island, not anything okay. people not did, anything right? People not did. not anything people did. The island itself is more, it's my fact, right? People, yeah, that's my fact. People, that's why that's why you need to think about this before you decide whether it's true or false. It's not, it's not the world's biggest cheesecake was made there. Uh, it's not, you know, the it's, most. It's not even that's where people people were like the birth of mankind or anything. It's got nothing to do with people, is what I'm saying. I'm just okay, the to most, do with a very particular, the island itself. The most dormant volcanoes. Okay. Oh, yes. that's, that's a pretty good guess. Yeah. It's a pretty good guess. All right, all right. What it is, it, it does exist. Yay. It does hold a record. So it is, it is true. What it is, is it's uh, Michigan's. Isle Royale is Michigan. a national park. Michigan. Yeah, so Michigan. So so Great Lakes mm. yes, up yes, in the yes. northeastern side of, of America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michigan's Isle Royale is a is an island national park in the middle oh sort of, of north, Lake. yeah, it's it's in the northwest corner of Lake Superior. Superior. Yes. Right? This yes. this particular national park is two thousand two hundred and one square kilometers of basically like nothing. There's no roads there, it's only accessible by water. You have to kind of take a ferry um, it's a three-hour ferry ride or a seaplane. Like this is how you get to this national park. There's there's literally nothing there, but it's so big, two thousand two hundred one square kilometers, that that Michigan's island, this Isle Royale, has its own lake called Siskiwit Lake, and in Siskiwit Lake so there is an island, and it's an island called Ryan Island, and what that makes Ryan Island is the largest island on the largest lake. On the largest island, on the largest freshwater lake in the world, because it's the largest island on a lake, which in turn is on another island, which is on a lake. So it's, yeah. Yes, I that's that incredible. Again. Ryan Island's the largest island mm. on the largest lake, on the largest mm. island, on the largest freshwater lake in the world. 
That's possibly our, our sharpest fact <laughs> of the <laughs> whole the series so I la- far. I was, I was hoping that, I was hoping that cool. your, your narcissism would, would call it true. <laughs> and and I, I, I was not disappointed. <laughs> Man, that is flipping amazing. It, it, um, I happen to know uh, from my former life, my, my ex-brother-in-law, uh, he had a, a wonderful mate who was, um, he would run... Um, kind of uh, what do you call it uh, in, in game farms and stuff he'd run the kind of um, chalets and stuff and, and but like five star stuff okay yeah all over Botswana a little bit of uh, hood sprayed area and, and general manager or the hospitality yeah, manager kind of that like, kind of thing okay. yeah yeah and there's they'd go to a place they went to a place once it's an island in the m- middle of the Zambezi mm. so you get there and you, you row and there's crocs and you gotta be careful you get there and then you get to the island and then it's this awesome experience <clears throat> where you kind of there's a bar open 25 hours a day and you just write on the slip when you take something out and they play some music and and the oaks will put out some chow and brine and stuff and it's it's this it sounds like the beach the movie the beach except <laughs> It's in the Zambezi and there's yeah. Crocs. But besides that, it's like the movie The Beach. It just sounds like there's nothing. It's just a party you, you gotta, in the middle of a river. you got to get yeah. there with a thing. Can you imagine the commute home? Mm. Like you think your normal commute home drunk from the bar. <laughs> like is a, is Sunday a, afternoon like, feeling. Try to oh, catch man. an Uber. No, no. you got to. Oh, I, I, I was going to. Stop it. I yeah, know. Oh, no more for me. I've got to row four hours to get home. <laughs> <laughs> So incredible, but so this Ryan Island, but it's it's not uh, you can't go and jewel there. Hey, it's probably protected by. Well, the you could you can go there because it's a national park. So you can go to to the Isle Royale in the middle of Lake Superior, wow. and then from the Isle Royale you can make your way to Siskiwit Island to to Siskiwit Lake. Lake, and then from there you can take a little paddle boat or I suppose swim out to Ryan Island. That's incredible, man. Yeah, there you are. Jeez, like you know those. <laughs> Things that never end, like staring at yourself in a mirror with a mirror behind you. It just never ends. It's an island within an island within an island within an island. <laughs> when does this ever stop? Yeah, I mean, it stops at Ryan Island. Otherwise, we would have, I would have gone the extra. There's no lake on Ryan Island, unfortunately. Well, <clears throat> you went and saw the lovely one-woman show called uh, Il uh, by our Ile. good friend. I think she calls it Il. 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 Yes, it's our lovely friend Sophie. Uh, and uh, that she did very well at Grahamstown. She's still doing the show. I saw it. It's wonderful. It's all about her trip to uh, Ile de Maurice. Now, that sounds... Which is Mauritius in yes. English, right? Yeah, yeah, but people think Mauritius would have come from a French name. It actually, it, it wasn't. It, it was not from French. I'm, I'm not going to say it because it's got something to do with my fact. But that island's had such a fascinating history. Its nickname... At its nickname, it's, yeah, my fact is beginning. Uh, at some point in the in its history, it was nicknamed. I've got to get this right because it's so lovely. <laughs> La prostitue de l'océan Indien. Indien, not Indien. So I'll say that again. Its nickname became La prostitue de l'océan Indien. The prostitute of the Indian Ocean. She, oh, Onjon, that, that was Onjon. what I was I was trying to work out as well. Onjon. Onjon. I thought you meant like the engine garage. No, no like engine, mm. the prostitute of the engine. <laughs> no, I, I know her. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> all the trackers, all the trackers pick her up. <laughs> so, how, how is your mum? <laughs> like completely, <laughs> completely unconnected. The and pa- pa- pardon Island. <laughs> pardon, 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 pardon me, pardon Island. Yeah, the engine in Pardon Island. <laughs> The prostitute, the engine, the pardon island. Uh, that so makes it sounds very fancy when you said like <laughs> that. La prostitute, yeah. the enzone, this is a, la this par- is a, pardon il. This isn't 20 bucks for a for a hand shandy behind the toilets, you know. This le prostitute, the engine, the pardon island. Anything in French sounds amazing. <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah, well, that's uh, one of my facts because uh, it's been colonized by five different nations. Oh, I see. Okay. There's the fact. La prostitute. Uh, uh, no, that I'm being all Pablo Escobar. La prostitute de l'océan Indien. On, on, yeah, you don't okay. say Indien, you say 
Eunjin. Injin or Eunjin. You don't say Injin, you say something else. Okay. So is your, your fact is that it's called oh, this yeah. because it's been like, colonized by five Injin. nations. Mm, mm, mm. Are you rhyming? Injin. My only question Injin. is, are you rhyming this? Is it actually being colonized by like eight nations? <laughs> you know, is this is this a Ryan or are you gonna stick hard and fast to the facts here? I'm gonna believe you're telling the truth this time, Ryan. So I can't remember is it on Jen. On Jen. It's not in Jen, on Jen. In Jen. Um you've gone with me telling the truth. And I, mean, I don't know why, because I don't know what I did wrong, but I am telling the truth. Oh I marvelous. Am. Okay, thank you. I am. Um well I you know, if if we get technical, I could I could be I could be lying. Uh but it was it's been I said colonized. Nah, 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 nah. Look, I'll give it to you. Discovered by the Arabs, uh, given permission to colonize uh, by the Portuguese, definitely colonized by the Dutch, definitely then taken over by the French, and then seized by the British. Um, sure. Yeah, and, and no indigenous people uh, on Mauritius. Uh, seriously, no, I'm not. Def, trying to defend, mm. uh, so people who were, were brought there were slaves. And oh, so, so it's not that story that the, like the apartheid government used to tell us. You remember that? Yeah, the, like, of yeah the, the white people arrived at the bottom, and then the black people arrived at <laughs> the, the top, and we met in the middle. Yeah. And actually, this country could be anybody's. But <laughs> there was yeah. no one in there was Bloom. No one, yeah, there was, Bloom there was nobody here. Especially, at all, yeah. no one was in Bloom. <laughs> I mean, look, I don't blame them. If if I lived here, I wouldn't be anywhere near Bloom. I'm like, I'd be in the Drakensberg, Guzzle Natal, Western Cape. Why? Why? Why would you go to Blum? You know why you go to Blum? Because other people come and they kick you out of the nice place where you used to be living. That's why you go to Blum. Now, you know what Dietz is going to do next episode? He's going to say, you'll do a whole podcast on the free state. Now. He's going to give it to us. It's coming soon. Yeah. Yeah. 18 milli facts. <laughs> 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 there was once a billboard when you drove into the free state. Said, the free state, where you'll find your soul. Yeah, because yeah, because you nothing. can't see. There's nothing in the way. There's nothing in the way. Just yeah, you could see for miles there. So yes, yeah, so a fascinating history. Uh, Arabs, uh, Portuguese, uh, because because I won't spoil the plot. Go and see the play. It's really good. But uh, uh, she has a story, um, Sophie, about the a lot of people fleeing the revolution uh, and settling there, and that's a lot of the origin of the the French. Uh, Mauritians who kind of still live there to this day are kind of uh, descendants of the French royals who fled France during Napoleon and all of that shit. And now, now it's being colonized by rich, wealthy South Africans. Sure. They're all moving there tax because haven. it's a tax haven, yeah. Um, we see what you're doing. It's funny, Pay your taxes. It's funny you should say that. Oh, really? I'll tell you a little tidbit afterwards. <laughs> Ryan stashed his 3,000 rand a month salary there this month. <laughs> you are gonna rely on money from the prostitute, the, the <laughs> engine, the part an island. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and I'm actually mostly um I called it the prostitute because um um it um I'm a bit jealous that I haven't been there. I do want to go there one day. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, there's direct flights from South Africa. That's how much money we've been putting there. We're putting so much money on that island, they're like, ah. We'll fly to you guys special. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> really cool. Um, all right. Let's uh let's uh let's take a bit of a fact. Um how old would you say a person can live, Ryan? Like a person? Yeah, how old do you think a person can conceivably live? Uh, three score and ten. <laughs> 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 um uh I think I think uh we're gonna ha- have a generation that's gonna comfortably Reach ninety five hundred uh, in general, maximum. You want the maximum edge? Yeah. Do you know what the oldest person who's ever who's ever lived is? Adam, I think it's nine hundred and Noah. Oh, um, Methuselah, uh, I think is the is the Bible's <laughs> one. I think it's Methuselah. Is the, um, yeah. uh, in 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 modern times, you know, with <laughs> da- with data you mean, and all you mean that after stuff. After Methuselah died. Yeah, yeah, with data and all that stuff. I think I think we're on about one hundred and thirty one or something. I mean that's 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 a bit old, but but my fact is this is my fact is that the world's oldest people all come from islands. Oh, the oldest, and by oldest I don't mean like oldest now. I mean the the, the historically the longest lived. Oh, really? Let me, let me, yeah, the people who've lived the longest all come from islands. 
Mm. Well, it's funny. Just the other day, I heard a weird fact about a, a people group. And uh, a people group, like a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> a tribe of people. Okay. Uh, who who? Well, did you know? For some weird reason, Bulgaria has got one of the highest uh, uh, rates of. Uh, longevity and stuff in so, the so I'm, yeah, I'm not talking about general general longevity I'm talking about quite specifically the people who've lived the longest in the world ever in the history of the world that we can record that we've got actual records for because there was a South African woman who was like no she's 163 <laughs> she's got the ID yeah Good she's got God. like a, an ID document from Home Affairs that proves it but there's no birth certificate there's no like she can't remember <laughs> that far back she can't tell you what life was like back then <laughs> yeah so she definitely was at 163 it's just a <laughs> typical Home Affairs cock up but, but I'm talking about people who documented they are <clears> definitely they reached this age they're definitely like so I'm saying the, the oldest people all of them come from islands shit um, the fact I heard just the other day was a tribe in Pakistan and they put it down to them eating um, apricot seeds. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have cyanide or something in it. Uh, uh, the seed, in, so it's inside, you must crack open the, the, the pip and inside is a seed and you've got to eat that. In, uh, in Britain, they, they, they celebrate the centurions, you know, if you turn 100, then the queen sends queen you a letter sends, and then yeah. you get a personal, I mean, she doesn't anymore. <laughs> Telegram, <laughs> but I suppose now King Charles sends you a little mm. letter. Oh, congratulations! You know, and then the the news services will descend on your home, and they all <clears> want to know the the one the one important question. You know, what did you do? How did you reach this venerable age? You know, what is the the secret to longevity? And over the years, people have said things like, "Oh, I uh, I drink a glass of cider vinegar after dinner," or you know, like I you know. And uh, and the most recent guy just said, "You just don't die. You just wake up every morning, <laughs> <laughs> relentlessly not dying." <laughs> when my 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 great granny, yeah. uh, the Jewish one, uh, she was living with my granny in Frenichen, and when she turned ninety, then the mayor of Frenichen came to visit her for tea. Ah, oh, I mean, it's almost like the Queen, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but she was a uh, she was a lady mayor. Her name was Mari Huchenut. She came in her chain and everything. Even Marie. Took photos. Marie Antoinette Huchenot. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then the newspaper article was so weirdly written. It said, Marie Huchenot came. She might not be the Iron Lady, because she looked like Maggie Thatcher. Mm. Might not be the Iron Lady, but she comes from a region that produces iron and steel. <laughs> 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 I, uh, I, I, my very first job, my, my very first job out of uh, at a university, I was a, I was a journalist on a community newspaper, which is a notoriously shit job, right? But <laughs> like, I actually had quite a lot of fun with it. But the one, the one week, I had to go and interview a woman who was 103, living in one of the the local <clears throat> old age homes. It was oh, her wow. 103rd birthday. Oh wow! And then you know, you get there, and everybody, all the nurses and the doctors are like, "Oh, she's surprisingly." She's surprisingly mentally alert for a woman of her age. You know, she, she's amazing. She's really incredible. Um, I'm like, oh, good, okay, this this will be fun. So then I go, and then I go, and I sit now next to her. Hi, I'm I'm Warren. She doesn't say anything. So then then I say, oh, okay, I'm just gonna ask you a few questions, okay? She doesn't say anything. So then I say, um, I say, so uh, let's let's start at the beginning. You know, uh, where were you born? And then I wait. There's this awkward silence and the nurses are all standing around watching. And this woman's just like staring into the distance. Oh, and after shit. about like <coughs> I'd say about 90 seconds of me wondering whether she'd heard me, must I say it again, she eventually just goes, Permanent! <laughs> and all the nurses are flawed. <laughs> like, and you had one word for your like, Oh, brilliant. Great. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Yeah, and then you have to you know you have to pretend that she's mentally with it wow. at 103, but she she wasn't she wasn't. Oh, um, I'm not gonna be like that. I'm gonna be fucking. We're still gonna be doing this podcast. Oh. <laughs> gonna be ripping the facts. Yeah, up. I mean we could do it at the same level at 103. <laughs> it's fine. It just might take a bit longer. It might be a bit slower. Deeds would have to edit out the 20 minute silences. Um, all right, so that's my you know I'm still waiting oh, for an answer. I'm oh, a fact. Uh, the world's um, longest living people no, all come from islands. No, because they're eating apricot seeds in Pakistan. No, no, no. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Generally yeah, yeah, speaking, yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying the, the the actual individuals. I'm not saying I'm not saying the longest lived populaces or mm. the yeah. I'm saying the longest lived individuals. 
it's important that I. I no, it's too it. hot, man. It's too <laughs> mind you, the coconut and the <laughs> pepino. You know, the Greenland. There's many islands. Iceland. There's many islands that aren't, you know, that. <laughs> no, I I, th- I think you. There's a bit of a hoodwink here, a bit of a lie. I think it's mm. the opposite, actually. I think you're going to find that they, mm. at the conditions are actually Life quite harsh. hard on an island. Mm. Mm. Okay, yeah. I mean, you, you've gotten the right answer, but for the entirely wrong reason. Oh. Um, because as it turns out, most of them do. It's just the oldest verified person ever, Jean-Louis Calment, who had a documented lifespan of 122 years and 164 days. She... Uh, she came from mainland France, so she uh, she was not, yeah, she was not um, from an island. But but the second oldest person, Kane Tanaka, was from the southern Japanese island of Kyushu. Okay. And most of the most of the, <clears throat> the older people are in fact from islands. And there is a weird fact about islands. So around the world, there are these little clusters where people live to staggering ages, and a large number of them are on islands. So the Japanese islands of Okinawa, which is like 160 different little islands kind of gathered together, have currently got over 450 people that are over the age of 100. Jeepers. Yeah. The <coughs> average lifespan there is 78 years for men and 86 for women. Um, Sardinia is the highest percentage of people living to 100 ah, or beyond. There's all this rage about what do they eat. That's right. So yeah. there's, there's a big discussion, right? L- so, lots of fish, lots of vegetables. So, or... so yeah, and, and, and they think, yeah, they think they're taking things that are basically like removing oxidants from our body, but they, they're not 100% sure exactly why because the people in these different island clusters are eating kind of different things. Then there's, oh. um, there's the Greek island of Ikaria. One in three Good Ikarians Lord. lives past the age of 90. So, Ikaria. Yeah, so, so like... Uh, they're some, named after Icarus, isn't it? Part of one of the Greek I mythology. Don't, I don't know. I don't <coughs> know if it's named after that. But but yeah. So so it's actually a strange thing. So aging and age is it's an interesting point, right? So like every species is subject to an intrinsic rate of bodily decay. There's a we we reach a, a maximum age, and what medicine has been able to do with humans is it's been able to keep us younger for longer but then at the end of our lives we suddenly speed up aging and we still meet this intrinsic rate of bodily decay so with humans that maximum age is supposed to be 97 we're supposed to be able to like an absolute outside we're supposed to be able to reach 97 because while and and while you look at the stats so they've done all these studies and they show that like an 80 year old man in italy now is as healthy um as a 60 year old man in italy was at the beginning of the 1900s so 1909 but so modernity has had an impact. Yeah, so, so you get to be younger for longer, mm. but then as you kind of near that, that intrinsic rate of bodily decay, you, you sort of crash. And it's different for every species. You know? So flies have got a you know, very short <coughs> space where, where you get kind of bowhead whales of 200 years. You know? and, wow. And it's, yeah, and it's just different for, for all of these things. And, yeah, and biologists say I've got a name for that kind of speeding up of aging that happens towards the end. It's called the compensation effect of mortality. And, and they've been oh. expecting, they've, they've looked at all the studies and they've sort of said, well, this is, this is the thing. We, 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 can't, we can't get older. Hmm. But what, what they've also noticed, interestingly, is that humanity's done a strange thing since the 1970s, is that we've actually defeated that. We're starting to so in the 1970s they thought our absolute um, intrinsic rate of bodily decay would lead us to all dying at 89. Sure. But since the 1970s we've actually pushed it out to 97. Gee whiz. And they don't know why. They don't. They they assume it's got something to do with better diets, you know, safer environments that we live in, less kind of uh, robust lifestyles, I suppose. But but yeah. So so humanity is defeating a thing that is universally true. Across across all species, and and they don't know why. And quite often, it's these people living on islands and eating these kind of strange diets. Um, I think one of the factors is uh, community. I mean, it's it's you know, mm. I think communities, if anything, gotten worse, right? Like, hasn't it? Mm. I mean, didn't the old people they would used to have their family gathered around them and looking after them, and mm. all of that? You'd move into the house with your your kids mm. and your grandkids and your, if anything, the fact that we palm our, our elderly off on old age homes and things should make it worse. I mm. uh, anyway, uh, Jean-Louis Kelment, by the way, there's a great story about her that, that some people may have heard. But uh, in 1965, she was 90 years old and she had no heirs left. And what she did was she signed 
a life estate contract on her apartment in central Paris with a civil law notary named André Francois Raffray. And she agreed that basically if he gave her two and a half thousand francs, which is about 380 euros, every single month, then she would leave this beautiful apartment to him uh, when she died. She's 90 years old, so André Francois Raffray thought that this was a great deal. He, uh, he died 30 years later in 1995, um, by which time she'd received more than double the amount the apartment was worth. <laughs> and she was, she was still going. They, his family was locked into the contract. They had, oh to, they had to keep paying her. Word. Yeah. yeah. Um, in 1985, she moved into a nursing home, having lived on her own until the age of 110. Yeah. So then, then she died in 1997. Jeez. So yeah, two years after Afray died. But yeah, she, they asked her about it. They sort of said, you know, what's about this deal? And she said, you know, in life, sometimes one makes a bad deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so 122. But yeah, so she's pretty cool by the sound of things. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, so she's, she's a real anomaly. She's a mainlander who, who actually holds the record. But Jeez, most, of these, yeah, most of those old people are from <laughs> Ireland. French, oh, French chick, eh? Just <laughs> gunning just, it. Just literally just, just, just doing it. will not die. Yeah. Wine and chocolate. Like something like that, something weird and cheese. Who knows? Yeah. So so things. so cheese is something that is that is shared amongst all of these, uh, and they're looking they're looking at cheese as being one of the reasons. They're thinking there's mm. possibly something in cheese that's that's extending the life. So it's it's yeah. There's a very heavy it's angle delicious. of focus on that. Yeah. I mean, I'll happily keep on eating cheese. You know. Absolutely, man. Yeah, and not just around the back of the Pardon Island engine. <laughs> 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 they do have a lovely <sighs> Seattle coffee there, I must say. Um, do they? Do they? Oh, nice. <laughs> um, this, so you were speaking about old things. Right. You know, like humans. <laughs> I'm going to talk about new things, like like new islands. Okay. Yeah? okay. Like, did you know? Uh, here's my fact. Uh, then we'll talk about it. But um, in the South Pacific, off the coast of Tonga, in 2014... There wasn't an island. And then in 2015, there was an island uh, which was about 1.7 kilometers by 1.4 kilometers a year later. That is my fact. That an island just, just came out of the sea, like a volcanic thing. <laughs> like north of Hawaii, it happens all the time, right? Does it? Yeah, because Hawaii is on a... <clears throat> on a tectonic break where the, where the plates are moving away from each other. Yeah. So the, the magma comes up from the sea and then it it causes the Hawaiian Islands. Okay. So I'm guessing that that's probably what's happening in Tonga as well, mm-hmm. right? Well, is it? <laughs> wow, that was unnecessarily aggressive, right? <laughs> like, can we please just... Like put away, the, ver- put, away the put away the varina, put away the varina, and let's. <laughs> I'm tired of you guessing correctly this episode. Just tired of it. <laughs> like, please don't murder me for saying so. But I think it's, I think it's volcanic activity causing new islands. Fine. Okay. So <laughs> yes, these beers are flipping lacquer. Uh, there's Oros. Um, yes. Yeah, so you're right. I'm right. I'm not lying. You're right. Uh, volcanic activity from a submarine vent off. I still think it's fascinating. Mm, mm. Uh, off a submarine um, vent uh, off the Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai volcano has recently We're created. Very sorry to anybody watching this from Tonga. Yeah. It Without re- a doubt, offensive. <laughs> <laughs> it created an, an island 55 kilometers off the coast of Tonga in the South Pacific Ocean. The new island was formed as a result of a six week. Eruption, amazing, uh, eruptive physics, which officially ended um, Jan- January 2015 on the 26th of Jan. As a result of erupted magma and vast plumes of ash, which reached heights of 9,000 meters, um, the the island, uh, which is yet to be named, this is when it was written. This article in in 2016, okay. um, it's an unnamed cone-shaped island was formed, uh, spanning as I said 1.7 k's. By 1.4, reaching an impressive 100 meters above sea level. As the island grew rapidly, it joined onto a smaller neighboring island, Hunga Hapai, and uh, 
stopped about 60 meters short of connecting to a second island. So you're right, they kind of join mm, up a little mm. bit. Hunga Tonga, both of which have had their, uh, that was the island that didn't quite reach Hunga Tonga. It had its um, flora and fauna devastated by the eruption. And he has another little thing about it. The new island is thought to be composed mainly of scoria, solidified basilitic lava filled with gas holes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, filled with gas holes. And <laughs> so many like gas holes. <laughs> <laughs> Just full of gas holes there. <laughs> and uh, clearly defined layers of wet ash, which were deposited close to the vent and can be observed in pictures taken from of the new island. The island also boasts a vast green sulfurous lake. One visitor to the island said, There are thousands of seabirds, all kinds, laying eggs on the island. So I, I, I mean I love that. So I mean if there's seabirds laying eggs and they're gonna poo on the island and things are gonna grow because they pooed and there's gonna be fauna and flora on this massive thing which was one point seven by one point you got yourself a new island. We can all have an island one day of and our I, own. I, that's literally what I was thinking while you were talking. I was like, I wonder how they like if it hadn't connected with the other islands. I wonder how they determine who owns that. Do you mm. just like the first one to row out there and be like Baggy, put a flag in it, you know. Mine, I'm new Indonesia. It's my independent country now. Because I mean, you know, like, like, um, it, it's like supply and demand. So old Richard Branson with his Necker Island in the Bahamas, he thinks he's so fancy because he purchased his own island in the Virgin British, um, what? Not the Bahamas, the Virgin British, the British Virgin Islands. Hello, okay. British Virgin Islands, because there's also. The U.S. Virgin Islands, okay. close to the Bahamas. Naka Island is his mm, thing, mm. and he watches the little turtles hatch, and it's his little thing. Oh, what a dick yeah. watching the turtles hatch, sitting there with his billions of dollars There's watching fucking, the fucking turtles I hatch. Got me a daiquiri and a surfboard, and I'm watching my own turtles hatch. Um, These billionaires, but, outrageous the way they go about watching turtles hatch. But imagine he's like got in there, he, he thought he's one big, and then all these islands have to pop up, and we just grab one for like 15,000 <laughs> hey! K from Seif. Hey, Richard. <laughs> from from, from Seif Nurtuk. Yeah. We got one for 15 K, and uh, you, Richard. You so know? There, are, there are places in the world where you can buy islands for basically the price of a flat in Cape Town. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I mean, there's nothing on them, and they're relatively small. You know, you'll get them, they're like, oh, 100 meters by 100 meters or something. <laughs> but, like, I think Greece has got a lot of these sorts of nothing islands that nobody wants to live on because they get to, like, 45 degrees in the summer, and they're flat, and there's fuck all on them. So, I mean, you know, owning an island is not intrinsically, I think, an impossible thing for people to do. Just owning a nice island, that's the... You know, you can own one with a sulfurous lake and a thousand birds laying eggs, but you know, like a nice one with white sandy beaches, and that's the that's the real trick. And this island is called the Nectarios. Oh, why is the island called Nectarios? Because Nectarios live there. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm pretty sure. That, pretty sure that's a thing. I would I would be prepared to bet that that is a thing. <laughs> Man, uh, what a wonderful world it could be, man. Yeah, if, look, uh, to any government, if you give us an island, we'll, we'll market you on the podcast. Absolutely. We'll, and w what we'll do is we'll even stop the podcast in the middle to do a bit of a, yeah. like an advertising spiel sure. about your country. Yes, we, yeah, absolutely. Just for, for just one island. We're not greedy. We don't want one each. No. No, no we'll, 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 we'll share an island. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. It'd be lovely. It's fine, yeah. yeah. Got to get over my seasickness. It's going to be such a great retirement. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so do you know why the Canary Islands are called the Canary Islands? <laughs> Did you ever see that, that movie? Um, it was the Carry On Columbus, you know, those Carry no, On movies? because I'm not 90, Ryan. Okay. Well, Who saw the Carry On movies? Me, uh, uh, my mother. <laughs> Whoopsie days. My mother said, oh, this is funny. Sit down and watch this with me. Let's watch uh, ladies get their breasts out. Yeah, they did, eh? They, they, do, they were popping movies. into bed yeah. with each other. <laughs> and there was... Um, it was a lovely scene. I'll never forget. It was um, <clears throat> so it was carry on Columbus, and it was like the Spanish Empire type of thing. And it's like um, uh, she literally said, uh, "What's wrong with you?" I, my husband. The she she literally said, "What's wrong with you, Mavis?" She went, uh, "My husband, the count, <laughs> has got the Canaries." Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. No, no, he's been made governor of the Canary Islands. <laughs> <laughs> Does that sort of clever humor? Oh, you know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My husband, the Count, has, has got the Canaries. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. No, he's governor of the Canary Islands. 
Anyway, do you know why they're called the Canary Islands? Um, no, I don't. But Good, may- let me tell you. Let me are the Canaries you. on the island? Is this, no. is this your fact? Yeah. Did no, you s- my fact is my fact is that uh, the Canary Islands are called the Canary Islands because a language there called Silbo Gomero is spoken that is comprised entirely of whistles. <laughs> and that gave it this this bird name. <laughs> <laughs> you losing it? You don't. You don't think it's true? Uh, clearly, you think it's a lie. You think I made up an outrageous lie? <laughs> now, uh, let me tell you a little bit about Silver Gomero. Okay. I mean, uh, let's let's expand on this bit of improv as you, yeah. as you seem to think it is. Um, <laughs> what they do is they cup one hand to that side of their... It's, so it came about because the Canary Islands are quite hilly and mountainous and they've got a lot of ravines in between them and very small populations. So they cup one hand like that and then somehow they, they kink their finger like this and they put it in the side of their mouth like that and they're able to whistle a language and that and the language can be heard five kilo- it's called silver gamero and it's it can be heard five kilometers away <laughs> you're, losing it. you're losing it ryan you're losing it speakers of, <coughs> speakers of silver gamero are going to be very offended <laughs> with the way you are reacting to their language anyway that's why the canary islands are called the canary islands because of the strange whistling uh whistling language okay that's sweet. It's such a wonderful little thing that you've contrived there. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so sweet. It's funny. And uh, uh, well done. It's fucking funny. Love it. No, it's, 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 it's big time bullshit, but it's it's wonderful bullshit. It's wonderful bullshit. I mean, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true that Silva Gomero exists. <laughs> And is a whistling language from the Canaries, but it is not the reason they're called the Canary Islands. Okay. So it is still false. Sure. <laughs> yeah. But Silver, Silver Gamero, as I described it, they, they, they are able, they've got, they've got all these different sounds to mean the different, you know, uh, syllables. And you can whistle to the guy in the, in the valley next to you, five kilometers away. Um, That's mad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's very it's very isolated. The Canaries, eh? they they're quite away off the African coast. Yeah, so they're quite close to uh, somewhere Spanish, between uh, Spain and, and and West Africa. Yeah, and they're a Spanish uh, territory. And um, what's that other? What's the other island that is sort of in the Madeira is kind of in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, Madeira is off the coast of Portugal. But it's quite a way away. Yeah, yeah, it is also a bit. Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, Canaries. so Silver Gamero. The uh, Azores it, the, the, is another one that's kind of. <laughs> You're just going to name Island James. <laughs> it's no, the name I think, of I the think show. the Azores is actually an interesting one because it's, I think it's halfway between kind of Europe and, and America. And oh. I think it used to be like a, a signpost or a sign. Once you'd pass there, there was. Like miles a shell garage. And bugger all else. Yeah. Oh, yeah exactly. <laughs> next, next Azores. <laughs> Is is eighteen days of sailing away? Yeah. It's like the Harry Smith of the Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some hook there with a wimpy, <laughs> with a Nando's, <laughs> and a trampoline seedy, for the kids. Seedy hotel that you can't quite work out who's yes. going there, and also for some reason a couple of emus <laughs> no, for the kids. <laughs> kids to <pass. laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to pay this language the respect it deserves, right? It's it's no, no, linguistically sure. unique. I mean, hills and valleys, eh? It almost it almost died out. Yeah, it almost died out. Um, but then they made it uh, compulsory at school, so now twenty thousand people speak this strange uh, whistling language. Um, who? But what? Uh, who governs this place? Spain. Yeah, Spain. Yeah. So so. This particular, um, so it's it's on one particular of the Canary Islands. It's actually the second smallest of the Canaries. It's called La Gomera, where this uh, this language Silva Gomero is spoken. So it's not a general Canary Island thing either. <laughs> You're losing it. You're losing it. I got. <laughs> suppose you know. <laughs> a language of whistling. <laughs> In the Canary Islands. But you've been on Main Road here. <laughs> 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 I just call the taxis with a whistle. 
Mm-hmm. 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 No, no, yeah. no. Yodeling? You've heard of yodeling? <laughs> I mean, this is this is almost like sophisticated and civilized yodeling. Because let's be honest, yodeling, like, yeah, same purpose. Really? Through the hills and the valleys, yeah. To communicate between oh. the hills and the valleys. But okay. instead of just whistling various various notes, you have to... <laughs> <and you're> <laughs> moron. This is more sophisticated. I like it. I like it. I actually, I, I went and I had a bit of a look around. <laughs> 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 I didn't know that was the purpose of yodeling. I was very fucking silly. I like yodeling, but it's I didn't know that was originally because they're yodeling. Yeah. <laughs> no, it just it was how people used to flirt with each other across the valley. <laughs> yodeling me. Yodeling you. Why you yodeling? What do you think? It's you want to lay me? <laughs> I want to lay you. <laughs> <coughs> Oh my gosh! Okay, anyway, no, yeah, no. yeah. But I had, a, I had a bit of a look around the island uh, of La Gomera, and it it looks really nice. I kind of once you'd done that, I was sort of like I wanted to go there. Mm. We've got this little capital called uh, San Sebastian de la Gomera. It's only got a population of nine thousand, but it's this tiny little like all neat streets and Spanish and uh. it's really nice. Looks really lovely there. Yeah, I mean, except that all the people are whistling to each other, and you <laughs> won't be able to control yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would lose it. We're gonna go there when you have people whistling. I don't know. Fucking lose it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a lovely fact. That really was a lovely fact. Makes you. <laughs> it does make you wanna wanna go there. I mm. tell you, um, a place you don't wanna go to is in my next fact. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, it's um, it is a place called uh, Devil's Island. Did you ever watch the movie or read the book? Papillon. Yes, another French word, Cavalier. Papillon. <laughs> I actually haven't read Papillon. It, it means butterfly. Uh, it's a sad... The book did so well to highlight the sad, sad chapter of history of the old French penal colonies. Uh, <laughs> now I'm laughing at penal. <laughs> <laughs> the old French penal, eh? Oh, what a sad Apparently thing Apparently that's it the was. best penal you can get. <laughs> I'm full through this episode. What's going on with me? <laughs> so, and I read the book, actually. Uh, my mom, it was on a bookshelf, and she said... In the original French? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Henri Charriere or something is the dude's name. Um, and uh, he, the penal colony is in French Guyana, which is on the north part of South America. And... It's just so sad because when they got sent there, it was and they were like it was murderers, robbers, rapists, and and just anyone the government didn't like for about a hundred years. They had these penal colonies, and oh, only ten percent survived the first year. It was <laughs> like so I had this shit. Image of this guy arriving. <laughs> now, what are you here for? <laughs> I murdered eight people. I I raped my whole village, and you? Oh. I'm, I'm annoying. The government didn't like me. <laughs> yeah. I'm just really annoying. <laughs> so so th- there was two type of options. It was either that place in uh, French Guyana on the coast or you went to Devil's Island. Um, it's obviously a very, very pretty island, but not as a prison. And um, my fact is that in, in his book, he describes... Is- now, he... The, the whole book about the thing about the papillon in the book was we don't know what's true or what's false, but there is a lot that's true. Like he was a penal prisoner. <laughs> and he went I bet he was. I bet he and was. he did, he escaped numerous times, that's documented, and he ended up in Venezuela, which is uh, to the left of Colombia, and which is to the left of French Guyana. Um, to the west of. So we know, yeah. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> so we know he um, he did escape and he went there, but he, he tried many many times. My fact is, he escaped from Devil's Island uh, using coconuts, according to the book. Like what tying them together in a raft, or signalling to a passing ship. What, was it called Devil's Island before they put prisoners there, or was it called that by no. the prisoners who then, because they were so badly yeah, treated? Yeah, that's a good question. It was actually, um, it, it's the first time it was used by by modern humans, or, you know, or sort of European humans, because they don't know about before that. But uh, it, 
it was a shipwreck and it saved them. So they called it something beautiful in French about Salvation Island. Okay. But as a penal colony, um, shark-infested waters. Um, and, and they just died from malnutrition and diseases they weren't used to, tropical diseases. and but That's what people did back then. Like you read in a history book, that's largely what people did. I called they it the dried died of guillotine. some kind of yeah, <clears throat> dried guillo- dry guillotine. Yeah, so you're basically going to your death, but it's not the guillotine. But you may as well just be going to your death. Oh, and because slavery was abolished, ah, use these guys. The it's dry okay. guillotine may be the coolest nickname for an island I've ever heard in my entire life. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like so poetic. Survive. Welcome to this year's Survivor, guys, to the dry guillotine. <laughs> Who's gonna emerge one million dollars richer? Shame, man. So yeah, um, okay. coconuts, eh? Coconuts. Yes, yeah. Off. He escaped with the coconuts. He tied them together in a raft, and he and he floated away. How do you know about the tied together in a raft thing? Because that's that's the only way you can escape with coconuts. I'm gonna like fucking hold them and flap them like wings. You are right. He did that. Uh, but what he did, there's this kind of cliff, um, according to the book. Yeah. And uh, he watched the cliff. He, he, he asked. Like the end of Squid Game. Spoilers. Hasn't, haven't seen it. <gasps> haven't seen, is Squid oh. Game worth, is it worth a watch? Well, watch if I'm, it. It's amazing. If I'm coping with Pablo Escobar. How are you Escobar, the only person in the world that hasn't seen Squid Game? Go and watch it. If, if I'm coping with Pablo Escobar, then maybe I'm sure I'll cope with Oh no, Squid Game is it's lighthearted. It's okay. a lighthearted joint. It's hilarious. All right, good. <coughs> so he's, he's watching this 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 um, cliff, and he's watching the the waves, and every seventh wave is a big one, mm. which takes it out. And he's like, ah, if I jump off the cliff with a bag of coconuts, um, it's going to take me out. And according to the book, he did that with another crazy prisoner. They both had their own sack of coconuts, and they washed up. On shore of Venezuela, where the other dude died in quicksand, according to the book. Nah, and, that's a lie. And Henri survived by eating, uh, actually, eggs uh, of the turtle. Eat the coconuts. Yeah, they, they did survive by eating stuff from the coconuts. But when they got onto the beach, according to the book. So we don't know what's fact or fiction. He chowed some turtle eggs raw. Um, but... Uh, yeah, it was coconut. So is this the, the like the Shantaram of its era? Death this kind of just huge. bullshit just now, lies. The book was huge. And and Henri became a restaurateur in Venezuela. He got Venezuelan citizenship. Um, and he lived to tell the tale. And he wrote the story. The problem is, um, 15 years before Henri went to the penal colony, there was another book similar. <laughs> and I think Henri read a bit of that. but So he embellished a few things. But there were... Uh, definitely things that they could track. But one of the things, which is in both books, is he, he, he had tried to escape a few times. And the one time he, he had a boat uh, and he escaped and then he, he washed up on the shore of Colombia and he, and he found an indigenous tribe. <laughs> and then for a chapter or two, the chief says, ah, oh, come into my tribe. In fact, marry my two teenage daughters, both of them, and uh, make babies with both of them in this lovely tent which we've arranged for you. So suddenly this ho- this life of penal hardship. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Becomes a life of <laughs> penal hardship. Exactly. Um, and it's like, yeah, but it goes from, uh, yeah, difficult prison, harsh, to right. erotic fucking fantasy yeah. of, uh, yes, we'll make, like the ladies have presented a tent for you. Flowers, flowers. There's two teenagers who really want to get pregnant. Off you go. Henri, welcome. My guest. Nice. guest. Nice. Our guest. Our guest. I mean, it does sound a lot like Shantaram. Shantaram is very similar. <laughs> all the locals loved him for his weird Australian ways. <sighs> Turned out it was all lies. It was like James Frey's all the what little pretty things, whatever it was. Oh, that. Yeah. that but I'm thing. glad we're talking about literature because that that I believe takes us to multiple choice. Yes, now. yes, yes. And yes. and my uh, multiple choice is about a very famous classic literary novel called Treasure Island. Ooh, and I'm gonna Robert use my Louis Stevenson. Yeah, 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 and I'm going to use my classic format for the multiple choice. Mm. And one of these facts about the first edition 
of Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson mm. is a bloody great lie. But which one ah. is it? One of these is a lie. Which one is it? And it's specifically about the first edition book. Mm. Right? So, one, it was first published as Treasure Island or the Mutiny on the Hispaniola. Ah. Yeah. Two, it wasn't just the name that was different. It was also published under the pseudonym Captain George North. Three, that first published book also included the signature of renowned pirate Captain J. Flint on the map. That signature was forged by Stevenson's father, Thomas Stevenson. And four, the book is the first recorded use of the now famous idiom, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> My word. Okay, so the, the, the mutiny on the Hispaniola rings so, so a big first, bell. Yeah, it was, it was first, big bell. So, so the reason it would ring the a bell is because the, the, the ship that mm. they sail on is called the Hispaniola. Hispaniola. Yeah, right? yeah. So I'm saying that it wasn't released the first edition. If you're looking for a first edition, mm -hmm. Treasure Island, you're not looking for a book that's called Treasure Island. You're looking for a book called Treasure Island or the mutiny on the Hispaniola. Two, uh, you're also not looking for it by Robert Louis Stevenson. You're looking for it by Captain George North. Um Inside the cover, there is a map of Treasure Island signed mm. by the legendary pirate captain Jay, Fl uh, Jay Flint. And, but that signature was forged by Stevenson's father, <coughs> Thomas Stevenson. And uh, four, the book is the first recorded use of the now famous idiom, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> I'm going to go with uh, the, the one that's a lie is the second one, the, the, the captain... George, George North. North. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say I like I like the fact, I think you're telling the truth about the proof of the pudding is in the eating, uh, that there was a map and um, maybe the old man forged the signature. And yes, the mutiny on the Hispaniola just rings a big bell. Um, I think I listened to the audio book with my kids at some point. So yes, I'm saying the author in the first edition was not Captain George North. I mean, are you sure? I mean, the, the mm. others are quite outlandish. Mm. Ah, it's a lovely fact. Uh, it's a lovely multiple choice right, question. Right, uh, I'm going right, to go with it. Good. All right. Well, then let me let me do the the ones that are true first. Um, it was it was released as Treasure Island or the Mutiny of the Hispaniola. Really? So you are you are right about that. You are. Um, which is actually better than the original title uh, Robert Louis Stevenson had had suggested for the book to the publishers. He wanted it to be called The Sea Cook. <laughs> because obviously uh, Long John Silver in the book is he works as a cook on board the ship. Oh. Yeah, so he wanted it to be called the Sea Cook, but they proposed the changed name. It, it actually was released in serial, as was the case of of novels in those days. But people didn't like it. They didn't like the serial uh, serialization because it was so slow. They were like, "Ah, oh, what do they talk about this inn and all the issues at the inn? They need to get to the treasure hunting." So people didn't really like it, and it only really took off when it was released in book form as Treasure Island or the Mutiny on the Hispaniola. Um, the, the book did include a map with the signature of Captain J. Flint on the map. But here's the thing. Um, and that, that signature was forged by Stevenson's father, Thomas Stevenson. But here's the thing. Uh, Captain J. Flint is only a renowned pirate because he was invented for that book. So he was invented <coughs> for Treasure Island. He was uh, uh, Long John Silver's former captain. Long John Silver tells stories about him. He names the parrot after him as a kind of a mockery. Um, but subsequently... This pirate has been kind of adapted by various other writers and used in their stories and has become so Captain James Flint has become a famous pirate <laughs> because because he's just appeared in so many stories. And in fact, he appeared in um the novel Peter and Wendy by J. M. Barry oh. uh, a few times, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, the first mention is in a passage introducing Captain Hook's pirate crew. Pirate crew, sorry. He says, um, "Here is Bill Jukes, every inch of him tattooed. The same Bill Jukes who got six dozen on the walrus from Flint before he would drop the bag of Modores." Yeah. The second mention nice. is as Hook is attempting to intimidate the darling children and the lost boys, but is heckled by his own inner demons. "I am the only man who barbecue feared," he urged, and Flint feared barbecue. Barbecue Flint, what house? Came the cutting retort. So those are the two. Like Flint actually catches a mention in in, oh, yeah, wow. in Peter Pan. Yeah. But but um but it goes on. Uh, if you saw the series recently, Black Sails, that was filmed here in South Africa, Captain James Flint is obviously one of the major characters, <clears> as <throat> is uh, Long John Silver. And then um, uh, the book was first published under the uh, the pseudonym 
Captain oh, George North. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Some assume that. Why? This, some assume that this was because his wife Fanny thought the book was beneath her brilliant husband. She sort of said he was he was better than that. But I mean, he initially. She's Fanny. So, that's harsh. Well, the the story is so he he initially wrote it a chapter a day. Because he was telling it to his children as a bedtime story. His, mm. I think of maybe a child as a bedtime story. He would write a chapter and then he'd tell that night's chapter to, yes, to his yes. child as a bedtime story. And, and he, what drove him on, he said, was that his child loved the oh, story same. so much. And then he reaches chapter 15 when, um, when they get stranded on the, on the island and he didn't know what to do. Oh. And so he, was, he, got, he got absolutely like writer's block and he went for a while to, <coughs> to Switzerland by himself. Oh. Where the, the writer's block cleared and he finished the book and... And obviously, then made himself really famous. But yeah, so the first, the the, the lie, the lie is that the book was the first reported <laughs> use of the phrase. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. <laughs> yeah, that saying is believed to have debuted in the 18th century English language translation of Don Quixote. Oh, really? Yeah, the phrase was introduced by translator Pierre Antoine Motteau in lieu of Cervantes's original maxim, huh, Alfred de los Huevos lo verá, or you will see when the eggs are fried. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. There you are. That's a, that's where it comes from. Don Quixote, mm. not Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, yeah, I like that kind of um, in a series. Uh, Charles mm. Dickens did that with um, with everything. Yeah, yeah, all of uh, books, yeah, Oliver Twist is definitely uh, yeah, was yeah, in the newspaper. Books, yeah. Eh? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why as as standalone chapters, they're quite charming. Mm. There's a beginning, middle, end, and it's and it's charming. But it also, I mean, that sort of established the way that writers write now. You know, they try to leave you a little bit of a cliffhanger mm. at the end of each <clears> chapter so that you want to, yes. you want to read the next piece. You know, you, yeah. know, you quite often find yourself twenty chapters deep in a book simply because, because of that got constant that nice little, trick. Yeah, yeah, a cliffhanger thing. Yeah. Well, that's a lovely multiple choice fact. That's really, really lovely. And I'm uh, also I've I've chosen literature. Um, I've gone with uh, the Bard. Uh, I, firstly, can you think of uh, another Shakespeare play that takes place on an island besides The Tempest? Because I'm going with The Tempest, yeah, which is actually my favorite Shakespeare play. Uh, where's Othello's set? Othello. It's not in Italy, is it? I mean, it no, that's is, The Merchant of Venice. Yeah, no, but I think it is. I think it Othello. is Italy, but it's uh, could be an island. It could be yeah. A, okay. Well, the Tempest has uh, Italian connections as well. It's definitely a Mediterranean island. Um, it doesn't state the name of the island, but there's the Duke of Milan and the Duke of Naples or something like that. So, uh, it's it's one of my favourite. I, I, I really the one I know best is uh, the Scottish play, and also mm. know which is which is set on an island. They're all, yeah. or anyone, <laughs> any one of them that's set in Britain is set on an island. Right? And, then, and then Hamlet is quite good. Uh, I'm also lately very fond of uh, A Midsummer Night's Dream. But uh, The Tempest is 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 my favorite. And uh, it, it, it goes into like, um, when, when we think of what this, this episode has been, in my humble opinion, very interesting. Because islands, they, they capture your imagination. Uh, I mean, obviously Treasure Island... And then you, you, I was I was looking into like the Swiss Family Robinson, but before mm. Swiss Family Robinson was Robinson Crusoe. Right. And there's always these questions, and every like you want to get to know people. What would you take with you if you were stranded on a desert island? And and why an island? You know, and it's like we all want our piece of land, but it's also the solitude. But then there's the sadness because you long for a relationship, but at least there's a sense of control. And when you've got the Tempest by Shakespeare, you've got a dude on there. Who and he he's had a trauma in his life. He was uh, betrayed, and now he's considering revenge. And he's and and he's but he's got the sense of control because there's very few entities on this island, mm. and he starts mm. to control them. And then he starts to reenact or act out his his his, his revenge. And uh, I just love that kind of simplicity that you can actually. It's not a crazy Shakespearean farce where there's 20 characters running in and out and off stage and it's like you lose track and when the lovers are doing this and who's <laughs> confused. Midsummer Night's Dream. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not that. It's like you can actually feel the dude's thing. He's, you can keep track of what's happening. Yeah, it's, it's a good place for a story because it is an enclosed environment. Enclosed right? environment like there's nothing yeah. in, nothing out. This is what it is. Yeah. And so my, my question uh, to see how well you know The Tempest, if you do, in the, in the beginning of the play... Um, which of these one of these characters wasn't 
on the island in the beginning. And they are, of the four, Prospero, Sycorax, Miranda, and Caliban. One of them wasn't on the island. Prospero, Sycorax, so this is Miranda, I mean, I've, I've Caliban. Literally, I've literally studied this. So Prospero's the mage, right? If I remember correctly. He's the, the main guy. And then Caliban is the beast that lives on the island. Kind of the strange servant. Um, so then you've got Sycorax and Miranda. I would imagine Sycorax is a is some sort of local ent- uh, Miranda. Miranda's the one who's not. Yeah, because I, I seem to remember that. So, so t- the Tempest is about there's a shipwreck and then people kind of land on the island and then they have to they have to pretend that they are not who they are and there's a lot of cross dressing and mm. a lot of yes, like, yes. confusion and yeah, people land up falling in love. Yes, comedy. Yes, yes. There's magic. Yeah, yeah, and they end up falling in love with people of the of the same sex. As shockingly as, as that is, um, which must have been very strange in, in Shakespeare's day, because you've got a lot of men acting the woman who are then acting men, you know, like on stage. Been, it's been a bit, uh, a bit comical just from that perspective. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm, I think, yeah, if I'm going to think about like an external character, I would say I think there's a brother and sister or something that uh, arrives. I, th- I think Miranda is the external character. Okay. Uh, Shucks, I thought you'd get this one, man. Oh, really? Okay. No, so at the start of the play, we got we got Prospero, w- who was stranded there with his daughter, Miranda. Oh, okay. And what's left is this yeah, indigenous no, yeah. uh, character, Caliban, who is the son of the witch, Sycorax, okay. who, who died. Um, um, and so, you know, you've, it's such an interesting thing because... Like there's been Jung, Jungian psychologists or sc- mm. schools of Jungian thought of analyzed that and it's like um, they call you know the shadow is this Caliban oh, yeah, yeah. it's kind of this this part of ourselves and then then the virgin innocence is Miranda and then the controlling power oh, dude really is, academics do yeah. get paid to write a lot of gumph don't they <laughs> and, <laughs> just ridiculous amounts of money being poured into nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> but like, universities have got squandery levels of cash. Who's paying someone to write that crap? But you know, why I why I think it's my favorite is because um, you know if if in life you you think you've been through a terrible time and and mm. and you're treated badly, then something inside you wants to act out the revenge. And for for Shakespeare. He saw himself as Prospero because he was a writer, mm. and he played God a lot. As Prospero used magic and fairies, and, and yeah, he's, the, he's the mage. So that that yeah, at least I remember yeah. correctly. And yeah. then, but at the end, he gets his enemies in, and he forgives them. So who's and the external character? Sycorax. Oh, well, because well, she, she was never there. there. Well, she was there. She was mentioned. She, but she was, was there. She was a local. She was a local she, until she died. No, Ryan. She's never in the start Ryan, of the. I said at the call, start of the play. I'm calling it the start of the play. The start of the, the start of the play. Sycorax is dead already, but she's mentioned. But she's still a local. You were asking, is it locals play no. for local people? You were no, saying, who's no, the who's, who's the there outsider? At the start. Who was there at the start? Oh, who's, who was there at the start? Yeah. Okay, is that what you said? Yeah. Did you use those particular words? Oh, people are going to have to rewind and double check. <laughs> so it's going to have to happen. You're, right? have to, you're making them get off their butts and yeah, use just their like mouths. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> Shame. Um, no, so at the start of the play, I think that's how I phrased okay. it. It was those right. three. Clever. Oh, but here's why I like Clever. it. Cause he, cause Clever. Clever uh, Prospero reconciles with his enemies, and then he takes his book of magic at the end, and he throws it into the ocean. Mm. Uh, and it was Shakespeare's final play. So... He took his arts, which was writing, and he and he threw it into the ocean. So he obviously saw himself as Prospero, and he had played God so many times. I, I didn't realize it was his final play. I thought mm. it was quite early. I thought it was just after Romeo and Juliet. That uh, was his final play. And apparently mm. uh, the players in the Shakespearean company, or whatever they call themselves, um, knew it was his favorite and uh, buried him with a copy of it. Yeah. yeah. So me, that's got uh, a lot of... Uh, a baggage from the past that needs to maybe reconcile with enemies, you know. It needs to become a wizard on an island and then throw <laughs> your wizard book in the sea. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you which wizard book you need to throw in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for you. Very heavy. <laughs> <laughs> it's very heavy. <laughs> it's anyway, good. that was good. Thank you very much, Ryan. Yes, what yeah. a lovely episode. Thanks, Dee. It's good topic. Well, thank you for sticking yes. around. Please share, like, click. Um, 
We're going to be introducing some sort of um, Patreon thing soon. Good. We will, yes. yeah. Buy us a burger. Yeah, kind of. It's called yeah, buy, buy us a burger. Buy, yeah. <laughs> buy us a house. Buy us an <laughs> island in Greece is what it's called. Um, yeah. So Because... We also we want to hear from you guys. What are the things you like? What are the things you don't like? Please put them in the comments. Let us know. Yeah, um, we'll talk about anything. Really, we really will. Yeah, we no, no. really will. <laughs> Ryan's life is very empty. He's got a lot of, a lot of spare lot time. Of time. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much, me. and we will catch you next time yes. on What's Thanks Effect. Thanks so much for watching, and if I don't see you tomorrow, then good night and good evening. And, and <laughs> <laughs> You always mess that up. You want to have a catchphrase. You can't even do your catchphrase. It's like, what the fuck is going on in this podcast? <laughs> Bye, <Good night>. everybody. <laughs>